Was the Forex trading, because I know a lot of the currency pairs that you were trading, was that done all through the futures market as well? No. Uh, no so we that actually, actually reached the point. Currency pairs. We reached a point at around 110 to 20 million under okay. management and futures where okay. I could see the handwriting on the wall that I was going to start running out of futures capacity. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, now it might not be as much the case today. You got to remember this is, uh, we're talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, early 1990s, you know, sure. we we're almost three decades ago. Uh, God, that makes me feel in, old. <laughs> it's probably older than you, right? I was born in 95. Don't, don't yeah, mention the Exactly. <laughs> yeah. This would be, yeah. Before you were born, the, uh, when you, when you had those types of liquidities and you really got over about a hundred million to 200 million, yeah. you'd see CTA starting to struggle on their performance. Really? And a lot of clients, well, it's kind of like Warren Buffett trying to move a, a stock just, position. Right, Everybody's watching Everybody's you. Looking, yep. <clears throat> All the orders are going through the pit. Somebody sees, okay, well, somebody here is selling, you know, 10,000 bond positions. That must be fill in the blank. Right. Um, <clears throat> so what happens is you're kind of defeating yourself with your size. And I didn't want to ever get to that point. And clients would ask you the question, what happens if you get to this number? Do you have a mm -hmm. number where you have to close, you know, limit your mm -hmm. uh, access? And I, most of the legitimate large guys would say, yeah, my number is 150 or my number is 200 or something. I think at that sure. point we're going to close down. And, and then the typical procedure was every year at the end of the year, you just give the extra money over that amount back. You just make distributions to the clients. Mm -hmm. And, uh, enviable place to be in, but I could see that I was starting to get close to it. And so we start, we set on a, and I also noticed at the same time, my futures trading and currencies was as a collective group, the best group that I had, uh, you know, versus grains versus meats versus wow. precious metals. Okay. Uh, currencies were very, very profitable. I had had some huge uh, gains in yen and uh, back in the day, Deutschmarks. That's to make you feel old again because Deutschmarks uh, disappeared even, in 97. Yeah, they don't even circulate anymore. Yep. And uh, so in those days, there was a lot of big moves and they were extended moves. I mean, I, I had one yen trade, I remember, went year and a half. Really? I was in one trade for a year and a half. It just kept wow. going my direction. Never got stopped out, just coined cash. And uh, so when we got into FX, I thought, all right, this will be easy. Not so easy. It took about a year for me to reprogram all of the futures models so I could deal with things like pips instead of ticks mm -hmm. and uh, variable tick rates, basically. Uh, uh, it's because some of them are not in U.S. dollars. Some of them are in right. Japanese yen or whatever. Right. So you got to right. learn all that, you know, lingo and all the the little wrinkles. The computers did not like that all those differences. So it took us right. a while to deal with all that. Once we got it going and we exploded because now my capacity just went to a billion or more. Right. Uh, I couldn't even see where the capacity was. It was, was that so because liquid. at that time, really, correct me if I'm wrong, but Forex in the 90s and 80s, it was, you needed a lot of money to trade Forex. It wasn't like it is now. Yeah. So was oh, that yeah. because once you could break into the bubble and you guys were already over the 100, you're already in the game, you had the connections, oh, I, the broker. Everybody knew who Trendstat was. I'd call it, you know, Chase would, uh, I think Chase Manhattan, well, Merrill Lynch, for instance, gave us uh, 100 million of a fund that they did. Wow. So we had one client with a hundred million and we used their trading desk. They were one of the best trading desks we had in the day. Hmm. And uh, they did a great job for us. Uh, it was a nice symbiotic relationship. And, uh, but you look at that and they come to you and you have to deliver. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a very healthy relationship in that, they have the big money raising capabilities that I don't. I'm a 10 person firm. They've got, right. you know, thousands and thousands of brokers out there and financial planners across the country and world. And uh, so it makes it easy for me to manage one large block of money. And uh, once I have that, they have no problems. They know who I am. They know You're I've got backups. Know. Yep. They know I'm in computers. And, yep. and uh, so, yeah, it's real easy for them to sell the fund to the retail client because the retail client knows who I am too. 
Yep. Say Basso's got part of this fund along with John Henry and, and you know, Chesapeake and a bunch of others. And, sure. And off you go. 